Shabbat Shalom to Mishpaha Yisraya, the elect according to his sovereign power to choose, and to regard and disregard. We greet you all in your Yeshua's mighty name, the Hamashiach. He is the only one anointed of Yah to proclaim the power and the deliverance of this truth in his name. He is not a vile Christ or a Christ, a Lord, a Be'el. He is Yoshua Hamashiach. And may every God be damned and every Lord be destroyed in the eternal ish. Isn't that amazing as he identifies man with almost the same phonics as he does his fire. E-S-H and I-S-H. His ush. They shall burn in the eternal flames of hell for the denier of the only one given unto Yisrael, that we may know the power, the chuach, the fullness of Yah's strength, and that the Torah of Yah is delivered in such a manner that it ignites a fervor of great fire in the bosom of Yisrael. But we have lost the myth we have lost the meth, the sensual oils, the anointing of the Ruach We have this damn diluted Holy Ghost, but we don't have the Ruach HaChodash. And by the way, I will not apologize for my grammatic imperfection, as you would call it. I will not apologize for my superlatives that I will use to express one of the most repugnant and damnable generations upon the face of the earth. We are people that love our stars, don't we? We love the pornography stars. We love the black stars and the white stars. We love the Greek stars and the Jewish stars. We love the Hollywood harlot, the whores of Hollywoods, those stars. We love the effeminate men of Hollywood, those stars. And don't forget your damned soap opera harlotry and fagism and those stars either. And of course, you place your sons and your daughters above the very threshold of reproach and approach by Yah because you think highly of them and they're not worth a damn. I don't apologize. You offend me, then you need to grow in the Ahava, the love of Yah. You're easily offended, you don't have the love of Yah. So if my Ach of my Ahot says something to me that I perceive to be improper, and it offends me, then where is my love for them? I chalk it all up to their inexperience and their unlearned ways. So my ways are unlearned. I have not learned by the ways of the scholars, your Jewish philosophers, your Greek philosophers, or the philosophy of man. It has been taught in the simplest of way, and so I teach it in a simplified format that even our babies can understand that they can gather in the house among Israel not some child class for children that has been appropriated by the whore God never told you that an adult class I find the children and many times act with more sanity than the adults it's the truth. Toda, my friend. Hallelujah. And so I find the adults to be very immature in their attitude toward Yah, in their passion, in their expression. 
Hell, they express more over some dirty little hoist daughter's birthday than they do the Shabbat to Shabbatont of Yah. Whereby his mouth, his odor, the fragrant of his Hamashiach, the fresh oil that flows from my head as it did the head of Aharan through his beard and even down to the skirt of his garment. And so where's the mirth today? Where's the excitement about Yah? Where is the platitude, the Toda? Where's the Yada? A thankfulness that is celebrated with great dancing and singing. Where is that today? We frankly don't give a damn. I would use the word God in front of the dam, all right? But because of the tender ears and those that think that they are purists in the English vernacular and they really don't know a damn thing. You ask the vast majority of this nation what? How many parts of the English vernacular is it? Name it. And they cannot even tell you. But yet they're quick to correct. Stupid generation. He's going to make his presence known, Almighty Yah is among his nation, his people. And when his presence is known, there shall be a mirth, an aura, a great fragrant of strong scented oil that even the one next to you will smell the great fragrance of the flow of the oil that flows from the well, the testimony of Yoshua, Hamashiach. I'm quite sure that all the hot sprays on a little something to give a little fragrance. And of course, I would be a deceiver if I said that I do not do that to have my beard smelling uh, fresh. Smelling real nice, you understand. Yet we should be dressed in the old duo or the mirth, the fragrance of the greatness and the profoundness of proficiency that Yoshua has granted unto Yisrael. There shall be great sounds of joy and exaltation and extolling, O Maria, but we are like I certainly would not want you on my side cheering for me. The word got back to me that Abner had said to the little ones, we didn't play yesterday because I did not have a chance to thoroughly regiment myself for him to really take care of him. I'll do it this week. So he says to the little ones, I want you all to root for Reach because he's going to need it. You'll root for him. You'll help him. Because when I finish slashing and dicing and when I finish with him, he will need those kinds of accolades for his esteem. It shall be put to the task soon. I promise you that. It shall be. And so it is with Yah. He desires the mirth. I want to read something before I continue. Or I will continue. We greet you, my Ach, my friend. Ach, Davis, there with the Ach gathered in Los Angeles, California. And all of you that are with him this Shabbat, greetings to all you, my Ach, uh, that are gathered there in Los Angeles. Wherever you have joined us in your homes, we greet you all, my friend and faithful Ak Dawid Stroll there in, Louis, in Indiana, our friend uh, and precious Ak is kindness there in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, our Yaakov and our precious Yaakov there 
in the state of Texas, in McKinney, Texas, and all of you, our friends and our listeners and you faithful supporters that are so kind and so faithful, because you can find the, the norm of the whole house is that people will support them. I looked today in the Charlotte Observer and this nasty whole house called Elevation. The women dress like $2 sluts that are trying to draw a trick, prostituting themselves their flesh. You can see the effeminate nature in the men that, I won't call them men, they have the similitude of a man, the physical construct. But it's one thing that when Yah made man, he breathed the breath of his ruach, the power of his Torah into man, and he became a living, a chai, one that expressed life, a living nefesh, complete, from the inside to the outside. He was full of the light, the awe of Yah. He had the power of the testimony of Yoshua Hamashiach birth uh, before the creation of the earth in him. That in this latter day it shall be brought forth uh, by the excellence of the power of the Ruach HaChodash. That's why we must denounce this damn Holy Ghost and these false spirits. Because Yah is Ruach, he is life. In everything, even in death, he is life. When Yah speaks, death is still life there because he has spoken it. The words that Yoshua HaMashiach declared unto Yisrael, he said, first of all, it is the embodiment of the Ruach, it is in the embodiment of Yah. It is Ruach, it is spirit, and it is life. So when Yah says death, it's life. As they would say in my days, quote, that's bad to the bone there, unquote. Who can speak of that degree? Whose words carries that kind of ramification and has that kind of a depth? My words? They're not worth a damn. They have no value at all. Because the vast majority of our conversation is superficial, is false. Yeah. Nothing we can do without your sure yeah. yeah. in our bosom, yeah. that testimony. Yeah. I said to Yaza often, you all raise up the strong men. I love strong men. It's appalling as to what I see, the attitude. I was saying to one yesterday, I'm going to read. You all just bear with me. I'm rested today. I didn't go on live last night. That exacts a tremendous energy from me. And I was in bed lying down at 8.45. That's early. So I received an email this morning from you. You know who you are. Saying I missed you last night. And what a wonderful sleep I had. He gives his beloved, those that are beloved of him. He gives them wonderful rest. I was speaking to one yesterday because we think that we have been commanded to give this knowledge on to everyone and it is not so, Yisrael. And I said, when a man stands in the might of Yah, everything about that man personifies the element of Yah's strength. You don't have to buy it. I buy it all day long. Well, you're weak. That's why I declare that I am strong. I have the Uzzah. 
the strength, the might, the tenacity, the endurance, the willingness of Yah. I have that. You understand, I know that I'm weak, but he is mighty and he is strong. It's almost in my days that when the bully tried to cause fear or trepidation to fall upon you, you had an older brother. When the bully saw that, everything broke down then. And it caused a resilience of strength to rise in you. And you would fire the bully upside his head. Because you knew if he struck you back, woe unto him. And then there was an igniting, this robust ignition of strength that rose from your bosom and you went to battle head to head and you dust him off quite easily. And because you did that, it caused this strength and this assurance to rise from one's bosom, did it not? So the hearing of the Torah does to Yisrael. He wants his house to be strong. He wants his people to be strong. He wants us to be a mighty people. That when we walk in the presence of men, they ponder and wonder. I don't give a damn if you got on dirty blue jeans and you worked all day. There's a strength of a dignity that defies the conscience of man. And that's a fact. I said to my Isha, we went out Thursday to, to get some of the things that were necessary for the community. And as we were leaving one of the establishment, I began to walk to the vehicle to get my vehicle. And there were four couples, eight people in all. And they had this dark hue of skin complexion, like your skin color. And there was this one, he was taller than Zakin Yaramiya and taller than Ak Simeon. Massive big man. He had dreadlocks in his hair, and all of them and the women. And there was such a giddiness about all of them as they walk, I'm walking toward them. And I do all things in the dignity of the strength because I know who I am. I don't give a damn what no one says. I am not the tail. And all of a sudden this large, huge, humongous of a man, as they were laughing in their giddish fashion, his eyes lock on my eyes. He stopped talking. Then his fiance, his wife, whomever, she looked and she stopped talking. And so as I approached them, they all looked. And then the whole group of them, there was nothing said, there was a quietness. And they looked and they watched. Or you make that makes you someone special no it shows me the light of my abba the witness of my hamashiach and so what i get near this humongous of a behemoth of a man i look him in the eyes and i say how you doing man how is everything he didn't even know how to respond well what is that I'm saying simply this, that there is a dynamic system about the people of Yah, that it transcends every culture, every nationality of people, socially, economically, every government, because he has put them, he has scattered them to the depths of the earth, that they as a nation of people they bring riches to the land, not by robbery, not by pillaging, lies and stealing, just their mere presence. Just their mere presence, because they are still my people. 
And I will not allow anything, anyone to destroy that from this man. You may. I will not. I know who I am. I know not these lies that the Benny Hens and the Kenny Copelands teach. Other beasts like T.D. Jakes. I know my destination and my destiny. It is the promise of Avraham. It is the Dabarin, the word of great strength that fashions our minds, fashions us into the perfect image of Yahshua HaMashiach. And when we get there, our testimony is of great power. When we walk, our testimony speaks for us. When we enter into a place, our testimony speaks Yisrael. You don't have to have a walk that is fashioned like other men. And they will ponder this precious woman. She doesn't look like the rest. I look at this trash they call Hollywood, these twisted whores. That's what they are. And they always want to be naked. I look at the heads and the disfiguring of the head. They're cutting, trying to form and fashion their noses. I love my fat brown nose. Love it. I love the space between my teeth. It's coming among those of the diaspora. You understand? I love it. Could have had it closed, but would not do that for all the money in the world. You understand? But I look at these disfigured harlots whose kneecaps look like hubcaps, pencil little old legs, and they call that fabulous. They raise up a dysfunctional, twisted family called the Kardashians. They are pumping everything from silicone in their titties, in their buttocks, have no shame, and yet you inspire your daughters that this is beauty. She's a damn whore. They are damn sluts and whores. I say this to any man. I don't want to walk down the street with my issue here. And every man I pass by, you're in a gathering, every man has had her. That, that's not much of a statement there, is it? doesn't speak very well and yet the people love them they inspire them and yet when they walk into places people part ways and and you tell me these sluts these whores these fagite faggots homosexual freaks that their reputation or they should be inspired or we should be in awe we see these damn beasts no if they saw me they would be inspired by me you're boasting no i speak with great clarity i am a son i'm a child of the most high you wrote my name in the bosom of Yoshua HaMashiach. Before there was someone, check, she's, get her. I don't know, she's trying to run a butterfly or something. He had written my name in the bosom of Yoshua HaMashiach. Before there was any kind of creation. And because I have that excellent oil in me, that should always be a man.
the flowing of the essentials of the oils of Yah. What has happened? I want to read this. I'm going to teach on the beast, the Tanim. I want to show you something today. And I've labored this week. I have been somewhat busy. I have not had time to labor in the Torah. And so if I miss the point, I will not apologize. You will not even know if I miss the point or not. This must be redundant. It must be a continuous of this, the hearing, the same thing, over and over again, over and over again. You go to, uh, as a young lad, you go to the Baptist whole house or the Methodist, uh, and you see in the religious sector today, they have this uh, uh, format somewhat uh, systematically among the people, how they do things. And they do it consistently and constantly to remind the people who you are. You're Baptist, you're Jew, you're Methodist, you're Catholic. Is it not ritualism that they perform consistently? Sure it is. Why not the mirth among Israel? I want to read this. I want you to hear it. And then I'll tell you where it is when I finish. Yah says unto one of the most prolific Nobi prophets of this time and that time. He said, I want you to speak a word unto my nation. And when Yah calls us his am, am, he is talking of those that are of his kindred ruach. We are the am. We are not a go or go in. We are the am. We are the nation of Yisrael. We are the same kindred ruach of Yah. That's why it is vital as I was thinking. I said, Yah, I pray that Yah will grant even the, the messengers here, especially the one that shall rise and, and run this one day if I'm not here. The time to diligently search the Torah because words of great value and they have great power. It's just like this, you daughters of the diaspora. You have been constantly bombarded with phraseology and words, how ugly you are. Your noses are wide, they're broad, they're big. And hell, your lips were too thick. Hell, everyone wants thick lips today. And your buttocks, it was too, that was not what they call voluptuous. And hell, they're pumping jails. Every kind of thing they can. And so your mind has been branded that your beauty is not a beauty. And so you are ashamed and you get despondent. And what the world calls beauty, it looks like retarded mess to me. And that's the truth. Your yeah. says to the prophet, he says, I am despondent with this wicked nation, my people, and the sins of the earth. So he enlightens the Nobi, Yeshaya, Isaiah. He says, uh, he says, behold, Yah, I am the mighty one. He used the word make or make eth or bazaar. I will create. He makes the earth empty, the olam. And there shall be nothing there. Why would you do that, Yah? He said, I shall make it a wasteland. It shall be wasted, sure math. It shall be corrupt. It shall be defiled. Everything about this most damnable wicked nation we live in, it is about defiling. It is about corruption. It is about lies. 
You know, I listen to what people say. I read a smidget of an article of one of the senators. He said, quote, Mr. Barack Hussein Obama is desecrating and destroying our Constitution. He has done more damage to it than any president, unquote. I certainly wish I could have been in his presence. I would have said my most honorable person that sits in a body of some of the most august men of these states of America. Your question uh, must be answered. Your statement must be confronted. If this little man in three years has done that much to your constitution, your constitution wasn't worth a damn. It wasn't worth a damn paper it was written on. His face would have turned beet red. He would have not known how to respond. Your constitution is not worth a damn thing. Man, nearly 6,000 years have tried to alter the course of this. And it still stands. And it still stands. So Yah is going to empty this wicked earth. He's going to make it waste. He's going to turn it upside down. And he is going to scatter the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people. So it shall be with the Kohan or the Kohen. Those that... Teach them the perfect ways of Yah. How can I teach you the disciplines of Yah when there's no discipline in me? How could I show you the profoundness of Yah's witness of His power if I cannot testify of witness like I did with the group that saw me? He says, as with the servant, as with the master, so with the maid, so with the mistress, so with the buyers, so with the sellers, so with the lenders, so with the borrowers, so with the usury, the takers of usury, and so with the givers of usury. Listen now. He said that the Olam, the land, the Erech, the Erech, the land, shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled. For Yah has spoken this word. Now if we as a nation are living in a time whereby we call it somewhat prosperous uh, and we have much, we are all full and fat, we have eaten. Yah says he's going to empty the earth. He's going to call desolation and Every kind of demonic power there is. You're not going to hear this uh, in these kind of constructed whorehouses uh, that you attend. If that be the case, how shall one rejoice in the greatness of his power? And so when this one arises, and when the proclamation goes out, who is luck unto the power that has Risen up against uh, the Most High. So who, we as a nation, uh, what shall be our resolve? Uh, and what shall be our strength? Yah say, this shall be. I'm going to empty the earth. Uh, he says, uh, the earth also is defiled uh, under the inhabitants thereof. Uh, it is kala. It is corrupt. It is vile. Our thinking is vile. Our attitude is vile. Can I say this before I proceed? I received a call the other day. I said to my Isho, I, I don't call people, few people I call. When people call, I do return their call. But as far as engaging in conversation on telephone, I don't do that much. And so I received a call the other day that one at one time lived here. His father called me and said that you know that they have uh, kicked him out of the military because 
He was engaged in improper behavior with another woman's husband. And so she reported that to the establishment. It's one thing about the military that there are liars and cheaters in the military. I was in the army and I say this and that is not to dishonor any woman or begrudge their beauty. But I would say 99.9% .9 of the women that were in the military, married or unmarried, were whores. It's a fact. When you found that one that did not operate like the rest you knew, 99.9% .9 .9 of the women in the military were flat out whores. You found a very small percentage that did not engage in improper activities outside uh, of the realm of their vows or commitments. And the men, I won't even put a percentage on that number. You understand? But it's one thing that the military will do if you are caught in any kind of act of adultery, they will discharge you. They will kick you out. Although everyone, and I can say that with a broad brush, I will say 95% of them are operating in those activities. And that's the truth. Whether they are sailors, Marines, Air Force, Army, Coast Guard, it makes no difference at all, Yisrael. I'm injecting that to say this. What kind of a mindset, what corruption and defilement, not only that, as one that can produce children, if I had one of my lineage that had that kind of attitude, I would not even allow the beast to talk to me. I said to my Ishaw the other day, Yah's will was done in our lives because if I had a daughter that was a little slut of a whore, I would not deal with her. I would tell you, you are a dirty little whore. I have labored and poured into you the essence of what I know to be truth, and this is the reward. Get out of my damn face. I mean that. What father will be proud to have a, a faggot son? I'd rather never. And of course, I'm at that age where I will never have a child. Period. It's better for a woman never to have a child than, as Shirak says, to produce the very slips of bastards. That they don't even know Yah. They have no consciousness of Yah. I'd rather not have one child. And I don't have one. Than to have ten. And then we meet in our social conclave. And know they're wicked as hell. And I smooth over it. You're a child of hell, daddy. You're not even a mother. You're a wicked beast, woman. I said, don't take a word back. Y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah. I said, ain't not taking nothing back. Yeah. I don't regret one word I speak. Yeah. And I'm unapologetic when it comes to this, that we offend Yah constantly. And we frankly don't give a damn about Him. Yeah. Yeah. Hear this, Israel. Yah says that this land shall be all utterly empty and also the, it shall be spoiled for Yah spoken it. He said, but this, but the earth mourns and it fades away. The world languish and it, and it fades away. And it said, and the haughtedness, the arrogance, the hubris nature of the people of the earth uh, they do language. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the Torah of Yah. 
You for a nation that transgressed the Torah of Yah. The earth is empty. That's why there is no mirth. I want to show you something. Oh, I'm going to preach or teach. Hollow yell. I frankly don't give a damn how it is perceived. You got these weak howlings that make monies and they will say, we, I, I take no salary from, quote, the church, unquote. Well, you have, with your marketeering skills, you have marketed yourself so well that you don't need to take a salary. But they will never say that they gave me an offering for Christmas. They will never say that my wife's birthday, every place in the book, I've seen three birthdays celebrated. And every last one of them ended with hellish wickedness. Yokohan, this slutty whore, his head was cut off. Eob, his sons and daughters, celebrating. The three accounts, it was always death. Damn a birthday. You were birthed once, and that's it. You don't even impart that vileness in your children. It's wrong. Anything that is highly esteemed among the world, it is a damn abomination to Yah. It was never a culture among the Hebraic people of Yah. The true Yisraelites. You understand? It's amazing, my Ach Yosef, there are those that me because of my the hue of my skin color there are those well you're making it about color it has always been about color and you are a damn liar if you say it hasn't been you are deceiving your damn self and so one like me he is not endeared to by others because he doesn't fit the prototypical image his speech is not as one that has labored in the universities and they have learned the proper mannerism of speech i must say this though i must apologize to mr brach hussein obama i don't bite my tongue because i listen to some of that devilish nation crap. That's what DNC stand for. It's a devilish nation of crap. I would take the first word from the land that the Torah called Shittim. Shittim. There's a nation called uh, a land that was known as Shittim. S-H-I-T-T-I-M. I would take that prefix of Shittim. But I won't take the prefix of shittim and associate that it was a devilish nonsense folly of pure crap. I prefer taking the prefix of shittim and utilizing that, all right? So I did listen to some of his speech, his oratorical command. I can see why he ha how other people get so emotional. Because the boy, I must say, he, he was quite excellent. I said, I listened to his words. It is one thing about that man. He is, he is one that is, uh, it, is a, it, is a, it is a burning compassion of the man to enunciate each word, especially when he deals with calling the names of countries or individuals. He wants that precisely. And so as I listened, you could hear the people, they were, they were just aroused and crying. And I say, how empty, I say, how sad, y'all. How sad. When the Torah of y'all doesn't excite, y'all says the land is a damn corrupt place. 
You can continue in your ritualism and your formalities. It doesn't produce a damn thing. We must know the power. We must yoda. We must experience truth. We must experience the power of truth. And only then we shall be made our minds shall be transformed. There shall be a renewing power of the Ruach HaKodesh of Yah in us. And we shall be made free. We're not free. We're not free from self. We battle the same damn things. We're not free from our own sins, our own lusts. Listen to what Yah said. Take it up with Him. I want to read this because there's something vital I want to get to. I'll get to it. What I'm teaching in this series of teaching is not going to take me two days or one hour. It's going to take hours and days and weeks and years. I'll stay on the course until I die. Yours says that the earth is uh, to me. It's defiled. It is the spirit of uh, the uncleanliness of it is so vile uh, it is like a rag of a woman uh, from her administration uh, that's how foul it is she has had a rough period of time uh, and the stench it has set in the suns uh, and maggots are in it uh, this is what the land looks like. It's filthy. Where are the strong men? Where are the mighty men? You can see everything in the covenant of Yah. He has always had the power and the authority of the headship. He's rushing there. That's why Yoshua came to constitute the power of Yah's authority in man. I had a woman to call me the other day. She called us a pastor. So I returned the call. I said, you know that I identify no woman. She says, oh, I know that. And she wants to come visit. She said, oh, I know that. You don't come here with that. You don't come here with that spirit. And my days as a young lad... There were things that my grandmother, there were certain dress, there were certain attitudes she would not even allow in her house. Women with these long nails, you could not even go in her kitchen. She would not even eat your bread. And we eat the damn slop from the world. We let their filthy hands fry us fish. I'd rather go to Vaughn's kitchen and have me some fried fish. How about that? You get quiet. That's all right. Yah says the earth is also to me under those that inhabit it because they have transgressed. They have defiled, they have destroyed, they have spoken against, they have done evil against, they have transgressed the Torah, the laws of Yah. They have changed the very ornament or the ordinance or his chukcha, his statues, his prescribed mythology. His limitations, they have changed that. All the Shabbat is for the Jews. What in the hell is a Jew? What does the word J-E-W imply? When I was in Ohio, these things I know. The individual that he was an engineer in the hotel he said every time they call me in it's like fifty dollars an hour or something like that whatever they call me to do 
Well, the owners of the hotel, they had plenty of money. They had plenty. He said, so I don't mind them calling me in. They'll call me in two or three times in a day. I'll come. But it's going to cost them $50 an hour. That's not bad cash. And he walked into the banquet room. He just began to talk to me. We began to talk. He says, you know what? This is what he said. I don't think I've said this to us since I've been back. He says that my doctor is a Jew. He said, one day I was in his office. He said, and this is what the man said to me. It piqued my curiosity. So when I saw Yahweh's congregation here, in essence, I wanted to see who this man was. He says to me one day, quote, he said, you people are the most despised people on the face of the earth he said nations hate you all for no cause this is coming out of the mouth of what one calls a Jew he says to this man he says do you know that your ancestry and your people came out of the true lineage of what we call the Hebraic and the Israelites. He said, do you even know what the word Jew or Jewish, what it means? He said, we were people that made jewelry. And if you look at Bernstein, Silverstein, they all have those kinds of names, don't they? They've kind of, kind of uh, moved away from that because uh, they didn't want to identify that they were Jewish. Uh, it's the truth. We are a pack of jackasses of people. We don't want something that is relevant uh, and truthful. Uh, we love the ordinance that are superficial. We love uh, the arousing of emotion. Yes. He said, we are people that our name come from jewelry. That's, don't they call it the jewelry? Don't they call it that? Yeah. I've known this Israel. He said, and uh, your people of your complexion from here in this country, they have been the most ostracized. He said, people hate you for what? It is the truth. The most maligned people, the most ostracized, the most dehumiliated, the most beaten down people, from the darkest of the hue down, the greatest the oppression is. You can say no, it is the truth. And when you find the nation of that people, they have always been intriguing to all nations and friendly. And invite them in for their last piece of bread. We don't want to hear that. And so we saw this, see this false illumination of what we call Jews. And people buy from them. Oh, Rabbi, so, Rabbi, these damn pedophiles, you have more. Why isn't that promoted? They have uh, opened the windows on the Catholic priests with their pedophilia, haven't they not? Oh, what about all these Jewish rabbis that rape these boys? Some that perform circumcision with their mouth, that's a fact, and bite the foreskin off. It's a fact, Yisraya, but the power and the control of the media, you never hear that. Well, you're teaching something social, I'm teaching you truth. Because this is the most uh, 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 feared people, they are the most uh, honored. Well, they say, I'm a Jew. Ever. Oh, 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 can I eat your dookie? It is the damn truth. And so what a messenger that looks out of the norm and tell you these are damn liars. And the paradigm has been based upon a false analogy. I tell you the truth. The lad is defiled because of your traditions. Our tradition transgressed the Torah of Yah. Well, we keep first day. Well, Rabbi said that uh, the new moon is when you don't see it. Hell, that's not so. And so whatever the rabbis say, we believe that we buy that. I don't buy it. If they tell me that, I say, uh-uh. 
I began to thump daddy on them from the word. And, and the thing of it is, I know how to handle the word. You understand? I can handle it with the best of them. Believe me. So don't just challenge me with your little superficial verbiage. You better come strong when you come. I mean that. I'm as tenacious and tenacious with the tenacity in my labor, my work. I was telling a young man yesterday, I said, come work with me. He said, I'm coming down there and work with you. I said, boy, when I finish with you, you will be broken just one day. I, I say, there's one thing I let no man do. He does not work me. When it comes to the physical application, he's not going to outwork me. He may work as hard as me, but he is not going to outwork me. Because at the end of that shift, when I look at him and say, how you feel? Man, I'm tired. Okay, then. He's not going to outwork me. I'm not going to work with any man and allow him to outwork me. Is that proud? No, it's honor. It's honor. It's honor. It's preferring. It's honor. Can I ask us all a question? No. Has any of us outworked your sure? Not one of us. We have not labored with the intensity. We have not given up. We don't give a damn thing. So don't come to me with that bull, okay? The bull shrash thing. We have not labored in the intensity of Yah. We have not given all. We have not laid down our life. We don't lay down a damn thing. We don't even lay down our sin. We have not impelled the nature of our flesh. Because of this humorous arrogance of haughtiness. Now, I'm not a haughty man, but I'm a man of dignity. I'm a man of strength. You're talking about, you know, I'm talking about how the power of this Torah transforms a man's mind. And then when he stands erect, every man will know he's a man. And the woman will too. And she's careful how she intrigues him and how she comes around him. She doesn't walk in his face and, and want to laugh. At him. She doesn't do that with him. With you maybe, but not this man. There are many pretenders. They got all kind of Gucci bags, but there's only one Gucci. Looks like it. Feels like it. But it's not the real deal. It's not the real deal. There are shoes that I've never owned a pair, never will, because I will never spend that kind of money for a pair of shoes. Shoes like Finex. You put the shoe on and immediately the coverage of your feet, the leather, the skin, it is so pliable that you say, man, it's insane because they're each made, handmade every pair handmade so they only make a few pair they're not mass produce they make a few pair you think they make hundreds of thousands of bentleys or white shadow rose royces it takes them one year to make one the leather the cows that they utilize for rose royce they have never been around a briar patch. The cows have never been in a thorn bush because they don't want one scratch on the leather. That, that says something, doesn't it? And so it is with the people of Yah. If, if the world does and go to that extent, we frankly, we impel Yahshua. We mar him. We spit on him because of our own. Yah says, the earth is on the domain. It is filled with every kind of violence, of, of indestruction that is so vile. Every kind of religious philosophy that, that, that draws men. And everyone is intrigued by that. 
Well, uh, man, you, you know, your words are so harsh, uh, and you sound as though you're angry. Well, uh, if one that calls himself a messenger of Yah, and if one is not mad at the oppression uh, that is transpired, then I don't want to sit under that man. Uh, I don't want to be in his company. Yeah. You ought to be mad, Yisra, yeah. And so they have utilized the little catchphrases to destroy our strength and to make us weak and fledgling little weak boys. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry I said that. No, I do not apologize for what I said. Hallelujah. I got to get to something here. The earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because uh, they have transgressed the Torah of Yah. They have changed the ordinance. Uh, they have broken the everlasting, the Ulam, the Ulam Vi'ad, the covenant uh, that was of antiquity. Uh, that was before time. The covenant uh, that was birthed of Brit in the bosom of Yah. They have broken. They have shattered. Uh, they have decimated. They have desecrated. They have broken it down. They've denied the covenant house of Yisra'ya. They've denied the covenant people of Yisra'ya. It is a filthy world. They brought prostitutes in from every part of the world for the DNC. Demons. National crap. Same thing with the Republicans. I said, yes, sir. I said, yeah, you know. You say what you want to. But your party being represented by some of the most feeble, I think I will call my party, it's one thing those Panthers, those Black Panthers did in the 60s. That's what the Black Panthers party was. It was a legitimate political party to address the tremendous egregious activities against the people of the diaspora. So when they began to form the Huey P. Newtons, uh, 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 the Rap Abenaki, and these men like Dr. King were afraid to really associate with that because they were saying uh, there was a group of men called the, the Black Deacons. And they said to the clan, damn it, you kill our babies, God damn it, we're going to kill yours. And they walked with King when King was on the march. Yes, I said, God damn. Damn every God. And the Black Deacons, well, you're not going to learn this in your historical classes in your universities. Or your schools and when they were marched to places like Selma the only reason they weren't attacked in certain places because they had a group of men they called themselves the black deacons they're still viable today and they packed their stuff right on the side and say come on dogs if you want to play we will play right along with you you cap us we're gonna cap you your youngest and on and so we had this party called the Black Panthers to address the egregious of the people that were being oppressed. Come on, Yisrael. Yeah. Anytime you're in a nation whereby we don't address the very, uh, the, the, the malfeasance of a nation and a government against any people. I don't give a damn who they are. It's wrong for the Indians to have to live and to be subjugated to the conditions they're living in. It's wrong for those poor ones we call whites of uh, being Appalachian uh, to live the way that they have to live uh, and to be subjugated unto that. Uh, it's wrong for the people of the dark hue skin uh, that their labor is not worth a damn, uh, it's minimum, and these rich bastards get rich. Yeah. Why well, they don't have a minimum wage? These torted retards, sir. I was sent to my issue. I'll get back to that. I said, you know, Bill Gates, he has a house that's 66,000 square feet of space. He had another child. He said it was too small. I will show you the very insecurity of these men. When he moved in that neighborhood, he purchased up nearly a half billion dollars worth of property. You know why? Because he didn't want no neighbors. Paul Allen that helped start Microsoft with Bill Allen, he purchased every house around him. These vast mansions sit there empty. You know why? He did not want any neighbors. This, what's his name, Brunson that owned Virgin Air, he bought a house in Delray, California, a mansion, huge monstrophagus. He went to every neighbor, this beast, and said, 
I want your house. And he offered them monies that they said, man, you can take clothes, shoes, for this kind of money, take it all. They're insecure. Even the poorest of men are secure. Even when they're poor, they're secure. They know they're poor. And they hope for a better day. So any people that has been maligned, any people that have been subjugated to any kind of totalitary system of oppressing their minds, making them feel worthless, it's not worth a damn. It's not worth a damn, Yisraya. Even the system in this country. It is the very tentacles of the beast. And I'll get to some of that today, all right? Uh, I have to get to this, Yisraya. There are times we need to be bathed. You understand? We need to wash our barakh. That was the first thing that Granny said, wash your butt. Wash your butt. It stinks. You get that clean, everything else will be clean. She knew that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see the defilement of the land, the inhabitants thereof. We have transgressed the ordinance, we have changed the ordinance. We have broken the everlasting covenant of Yah. He said, therefore hath of the Kalah, the curse, the curse of Yah, devoured the earth. Is the earth devoured? Any time we esteem a man's degenerate mind, that he doesn't know that he has the similitude of a man, and he calls himself a woman. I saw, when I see these beasts, I don't even look at them. I saw this beast the other day. I was in the store Thursday. With a ball in his head like a woman. Very unattractive. There is no beauty about this thing. And so when I spot them immediately, I, I, I would go one way. I, I just don't, I, I don't play that. You understand? I, I just don't go that way, period. I don't even want you close to me. Don't even get close to me. And I say, what kind of retarded uh, mentality one has uh, that I don't know I'm a man. And I can't look at me uh, in the mirror and tell you I'm a man, I'm not a woman. This vile pollution that changes the natural use of a man for away from the natural use of a woman. Because they rejected Yah. They rejected his Torah. They rejected his truth. And so that's why you have the proliferation of whore houses. These are whore houses. They keep them in Horam. They become practitioners of Horam. They do every kind of vile thing, every kind of wicked. And believe me, in these dog houses, they're doing the dog. In my days, there was a dance called the dog. It was nothing like what they call the dog today. It was not. It was not this filthy gyration we say it was a song i believe it was a song we do the dog and the way they dance or they would shake their buttocks but nothing like even the physical conformity in that day it wasn't like it is in this hour it wasn't take us back y'all i love the 60s i don't know what the 50 was what they were like because i was born in the 50s but i love the 60s I really did. I love the 60s. Yah says that uh, the earth is defiled because of the inhabitants that are broken. Earth. Therefore, have the curse devoured the earth, uh, and they that dwell therein are desolate. We are people that are desolate. When something is desolate, there uh, the term used uh, is shamath. Sho shamath, just like. You spell math, M-A-T-H. When it is desolate, it, it has been uh, desecrated. It has been eviscerated, destroyed. There is no power of life. Where is the power of the life of Yah's ordinance today? Where is the strength of Torah among Yisrael? Where is the beauty of the awe of the light uh, of the testimony of Yahshua? I'm sure they got their ritualism. Uh, the people are dead. They're in sin. Uh, they're twice dead, plucked up from their own wickedness. They're dead. Uh, where is the uh, Shiram, the songs uh, of great delight? Where is the Shimcha? The Shimcha, the rejoicing. They rejoice over every damn thing. Son graduated from high school. Ah! Oh, my baby, my baby. Ah! Yeah. 
Walk with me, yeah. Walk with me, walk with me. Walk with me, yeah. Walk with me, yeah. walk with me. While I'm on this, uh, on this journey in the kingdom, uh, yeah, I want you, yeah. Oh, yeah, just hold my hand. Oh, I do that to throw you off, see? Because we are set in a rhythm. And when y'all says something, that's why when we hear things, you're like, you said that to me? And talk to me. It's just like training a dog. It's not difficult to train a dog. It's not hard to train a dog. The first thing you read, give me your paw. Well, how does it understand? Give me your paw. You pick it up. Sit. You press his buttocks down. Uh, sit. It's simply that you don't reward him. When you don't reward him, he finds no pleasure in doing it. But you reward a dog. I have those core that, that pawn over there. I said to little Eusebia, I was carrying them one day, and so she didn't believe that they would come. They'll come and just nibble on my hand. I don't have to have food. I put my hand in the water, they just come. I don't know if they know my shadow. They come, they nibble on my hand. They just nibble. So I say, come on, little girls, what's the core? And I go to the pond. She put a little hand in. Yeah! Well, I, I, I go to the pond. I can pick them up, and they're, they're swimming my hand a little. I'm serious. And then when I feed them, it's, uh, I put both hands in the pond, and I feed them. I let them come up in my hand. I pick them up out of the water and they even the nature of that thing understand the security and the comfort of that beast that brings a daily portion of ration to it and yet Yah gives us daily bread and we don't give a damn about Yah he pours his breath of life into our bosom we breathe his air we're on his time. Come on, Yisrael. Somewhere there must be a mirth. There must be a great fragrance that fill the house of Yah. What house? Uh, this bed. It must fill this house. Damn their pagan temples. Uh. Damn their church houses. There's only one bed. What house where the Ruach of Yah dwells? And that's the house where the power of His covenant blessing, through the power of the testimony of Yeshua, HaMashiach is alive. Anything else is not worth a damn thing, Yisraya. Has no value. It's irrelevant. It is not of any substance. We've allowed every kind of vile thing to penetrate our mind. Because we don't guard ourselves, we must guard the Torah of Yah. Through the process of our growth, our parents were ignorant. Through our religious ordeals, through our self-righteous ways, our ways of sacrilege that we did something. And so I'm so right. I am nice to everyone. Hell, you're nice to no one. I love everyone. Did not the whore teach you that? A whore loves every man that will spend money. She'll give him a superficial love, something that is false. He thinks he's loved. Oh, I know I love you. You're a liar. You're a flat out liar. I have never said that in all of my life. Because I don't know how to love everyone. I don't even know how to love me, but I love me. Well, how do you know you love me? There is no willingness. To defy the Torah of Yah. If any man says he loves Yah and keeps not his Torah, he's a liar. Herein is the love of Yah, Hezachal, that we keep his mitzvah, the commands of Yah. You understand? I'll do right by any man, just do right by me. D don't mess with me, man. I'm not bothering you. Leave me alone. You will have no encroachment from me upon you 
and don't do me like that. Now that you're not going to do. Will you turn the other cheek? Well, first of all, he's not going to smite the first cheek. You understand? So there's no need for me to turn the first, the second cheek. You understand? Because when I say to him, no, you're not going to do that. And I mean what I say. You're not going to do it. For you have no cause. That we're so silly. You think I'm going to let someone walk with my issue and punch in the nose? No. Nah. Don't even think about it. Don't even think that. Well, oh, punch in the nose. No, sir. Get behind me, woman. Now punch me. Come on. That alone. Walk with me, oh, yeah, oh, walk, oh, walk with me in this way. Walk with me, oh, my, and I walk, walk with me, I need you to walk. And while I'm on this so oh, tedious, tedious journey, I need you, oh, yeah, to Oh my, oh my hand. Let, let me move a little bit here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Again, therefore have the curse devoured the earth. I want to get the one thing here. It has devoured the earth. And they that dwell therein are desolate. They have no life, no power of life. Uh, have you ever gone into a home and you know that there's no life in there? The dishes are dirty. She's sitting there watching television. There's no... Uh, soberness or somberness in the home everything is just lifeless you ever seen that I have there's a stillness and a quietness you know there is no life there it's desolate he says uh, because it is desolate therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned they are burned and few he used the word math m a t h few Men. Me old. Few men are left. What is a man? What is the character, the characteristics of a man? I'll get to that in a later teaching too because I will show you what it means. We use the word hush. We think it just identifies a man, but there is more to that characteristic than just uh, a man or one that has the similitude of a man. It denotes his physical, it denotes the physicality of a man, his physical nature, his physical strength, his physical power, his physical dominance. That's what it does. Oh, I know we don't believe it because uh, we don't hear this. It implies that as well. So, so few men, man, few men shall be left. There shall be few. Where is the strong man today? You are raised up the prophet. There's nothing like a man. There's nothing more valuable than a man. The heart of Yah is indebted to him. He visits him daily. Why is his mind so constantly upon a man? He has given his covenant unto man that he created. He's a precious gem. And there's one that knows that better than you and me. His name is Hashotan. What is man that you are so mindful of him and the son of man that you pay a visitation to him? What is man? <clears throat> a place that was desolate and void and then light began to shone. The testimony of Yah's power, his awe, his light, Yahshua is the ore. Yah has sent light. He is light. Yahshua came into the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And the Torah, this near, this Torah that lights up the pathway or the derrick, the way we should walk, in the ways of Yah, in the knowledge of Yah, in the truth of Yah. And men don't love that because their ways are dark. Our thoughts are dark. 
We think dark things. We ponder dark things. Uh, you too bath, you children. You bath your daughters at Zion. It's no different at all because you came from the very heart of man. From the opening of man. You came from him. So there be few men left. So who defends the city? Who defends the house when there are few men? Mi'ut. I said to my wife, I said, you know, Raphael, quote, I said, you know, women talk about romanticism and being romantic. I said, what is that? I said, this is romantic to me. This is sexual to me. The way you talk, the way you act, the way you respond to me, the way you serve me. Hell, that's more sexual than anything. That's sexual. That's romantic. Tell me what romantic is. Holding hands. We do that all the time. This other world has jarred and messed up the minds of women. Well, you got to be romantic. Well, well, when, when he does things appropriately in the right function, uh, in the, under the right auspice, uh, when things are done in its uh, proper content, uh, well, what do you do but do you just simply go to sleep? Uh, this is a stupid generation. It is stupid. I'm not going to stop saying it. Oh, you think you're the wisest man? Well, the Torah talks about men that were wise. And they were wise. They were men wiser than Daniel. Yeah. We just resist that. We don't want to think that someone is wiser than us. Well, hell, I know that men can live more weight than I can live. Men can work harder than I can work. Men are more virile than me. Men are more strong. Come on, don't be so stupid, Yisrael. What a great blessing to have among you. If you have a man that is wise, you don't see it in his words. You see it in the power of his image. What he emulates, the power of his, 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 his manhood. You see that? The world will see it. I see it all the time. I don't give a damn if I got on blue jeans. I see it. What do you mean? Well, I said people watch. I said people look. Why not? Who is this man? Can I tell you this? I, I, I say this to show us that there are those that Yah has. He's put just a little pinch more, okay? Not much. Because all of us have fallen and come short. I went to a place of business on Thursday. There was this man and two men and a woman that were engaged in conversation and I needed to ask the attendant a question so I'm trying to work around and I didn't say anything and then when the appropriate time came I said excuse me sir could you assist me in this matter what about this it's okay and so this large gentleman that's sitting there we began to engage in conversation and so he made statements. I, I addressed one of his statements. So he said, well, first of all, these things called the and other hypocrites. I said, sir, can I ask you a question? How is it that you, by what criteria, you identify a hypocrite, you assess one as being a hypocrite, and what is your pedigree? How, 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 what are you about? Well, I said it more dynamic than that. You understand? So he looks at me. This is what Yah will make room, room for man's gift. And you could tell he was a very bright man. I, he gave me his card. I looked up the place on the internet who he works for. He's a staff executive. This man. And so when I looked on the internet, you know, that's, so he asked me, what college did you go to? I said, my friend, I have pedigree. I'm a high school dropout and a college dropout. That's, you can be sick. And, 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 and it's one thing that y'all will do. This young, brilliant man, he made him shut his mouth. He didn't say anything. And after I finished saying what I said, you know what he said? He said, you're the type, I want to listen to you. I want to hear you. See, he was a wise man in, 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 the, in, in the carnal wisdom of the, he said, I want to hear you. He said, here's my card. He <laughs> said, I want to talk to you. And when he stood up, he was six foot that. He was every bit six foot six, 300. I said, <laughs> Yeah, I did like that. Hit him on his shoulder like, <laughs> I said, man, look at you. I said, look at you. I said, what in the... I said, man, look, hold up. I said, I know. Listen, Shimri. 
I say, I know. This what, listen, this boy was sick. He was taller than Simeon. I say, I know you were one of the most tenacious guards, especially a right guard. You need that right guard. That's the powerful position. I say, uh, some defensive tackle. He said, by the way, I didn't play that. He said, I played running back. I said, can you imagine this train coming at you? This man was every bit 315, 20 pounds. He's a man in the physical stature. It's one thing that what y'all will do. And he was able to recognize. He said, I, I will listen to you. I said, well, you go to our website. You can listen to me. You can hear some things that will help you. And of course, his business acumen and his wisdom of the business sector, it, it was there because he was a staff executive. I have his card. I'll never call him. But I enjoyed the conversation. It's one thing that a man's gift, when a man has a gift, Yah opens the door for him. He will make room for that man. He will make room. His gift will make room. He doesn't even have to speak. And I don't talk that much. I know you all may think I do, but I don't, Israel, because I will not allow this wicked world uh, to speak against my Abba. I will not cast his name to swines and pigs. Yours, the wise one. He's the one that wins. He's the one that bestows. He's the one that brings. No man can come unto him unto the Abba unless he draws him. You can't even come into the house of Yah unless he is the one that draws. And when Yah brings you in, he opens up the, the mouth of his messenger and they will speak unto you. And that's the truth. You got these wannabes that think they have and they don't have anything. I can tell what a man has in the initial engagement in his conversation. And I talk just like him. I can talk with the, with the poorest of men and the most ignorant of men. I can talk just like them. Hey, man, hey, man, how you doing, man? And that's the truth. This is what I want to get to right here. Few men left, and he says, and the new yayan, the new wine, it mourneth, it cries, even in the grapes. The word yahin or wine, it represents the refreshing of man, not the drunkenness and the gluttony like dogs do drink wine to get drunk. It represents the yahin, the yahin, the fresh of the grapes, uh, the purest uh, of the press of the vine. That brings about a refreshing, uh, it, it, it makes his body feel refreshed. Uh, these pigs today, they want to sit down and drink wine all day. They drink wine with breakfast. They drink it with dinner. Well, it's all right to do that. Now, Shaul says uh, unto Timothy, he says, uh, for the often infirmities, uh, when you are a little sick, drink a little wine because the waters are not the best waters here in this part of the world. Uh, for drink a little wine for uh, for the often infirmities, uh, for your belly, for your bectim, for your belly's sake. And so we have pigs today say you get drink and get drunk. And that's what they do. They drink, they get drunk, and they think it's right. It is not right. We gather for a great Chagah, Feast of Yah. It's all right to drink. The Ak get together and, and they gather and have a little glass of wine and, and they dance and, and they hold. They get together and they dance. That's the way it should be. I said to one yesterday, I want to make sure that the festivities of Yah are so beautiful that it becomes so impressionable in the minds of our children. Like the world has taught their babies a damn lie Christmas, a damn lie Easter. It is a damn pagan lie. And those that say they love Yah will accept gifts. You are a hypocrite. You are a damn pig. You are a damn liar. In my ignorance, I will not do that. I remember a man saying, no, please just take this. I said, okay, I'll take it. I threw it right in, in, in an old building. And the devil said, boy, you don't recover. It's $50,000. And I said, no, he doesn't have 50000 to give me. And it went right to the damn dump. You accept gifts from them, you buy gifts. With these my grandbabies, you teach them lies. 
You say you have the love of Yah. There is no truth in a lie. That is one of the commands, one of the mitzvah of Yah. How are you going to say you love Yah and you love a lie? Who's the father of all lies? And the reason he's the father of lies is because he did not dwell in truth. And you streak to the hands of your wicked sons and your daughter, knowing that they're defying you. I say, oh, I got a beautiful son. He's not a damn beautiful son. He's a damn fat pig. She's a loose Jezebel. Won't even keep the damn house clean. No, I'm talking like this. Clean the house, woman. Man, take care of the house. You don't have to make sure it's bacon. Then make sure it's some turkey bacon, all right? How about that? Hallelujah. Let's get real. And quit pretending. The new wine, it languish, it mourneth. He said, and the vines, they, they, they languish. There's no husbandman there. There's no one tending to the vines. There's no one. We, we have been planting garden for because we put out thousands of plants. And I've got others to put out. I said to Oximion this morning, I said, Oximion, I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to individually hand plant each one of those seeds that I want to put out. I said, and the reason why, because it supplies much during the cold months. It gets better as it gets colder. Uh, it, it becomes more sweeter as the frost, colored greens. Uh, I said, and I don't like the way that the, that the uh, planter dispersed the seeds. I said, I want to be attentive to each seed so they can grow larger. They go out there and pick off the ones that if they're two or three in a hole, take two and leave one, let that grow. I said, we were abundant. So it takes a meticulous... Uh, mindset to take your time to do that so we have been planting in the garden and of course we're walking in water that's nearly it's above our ankles midway of our calves but i know the things that we're planting loves water i know cabbages and brussels sprouts uh, uh, and they, they love water i know it does and and broccoli i know it takes a lot of fertilizer because they are, they, are, they are enormous eaters. And so it's a great blessing to be able to get out in the garden and the back's hurt and you bend the back. You bend down and you labor to get it in the garden. And so I remind the hawk, I say, don't you know if you go and buy that banana from the store or those greens from the store, don't you know that it's some Mexican, all day long he's labored for you to have greens. And he didn't make any money for that. Bend your back, man. If he can do it, am I more than a man that is a man as me? If he can bend his back to make sure that I have bread, then I can bend my back to make sure you have bread. And you ought to be able to bend your back to make sure that it is properly prepared and, and there's an attendance to it. It's a damn shame. Yah is going to bring this damn nation down to the brinks of great darkness. It's already there. It's already there. We're in the, we're in the hour of Hoshech. 99,000 jobs produced last month. How do, you, how do you supply sufficient employment for a, a, an economy that's greedy, that doesn't give a damn about anyone else? You would think that these damn pigs, but this Mr. Romney and Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, they would always say, and God bless the United States of America. Well, the devil is on your side, Mr. Obama. He is the only God that I know of uh, that has substantial power. All the rest of them are damn little peons and dogs. You would think that he would say that, well, what is America? Is uh, uh, is, are we not in the, uh, in, in, in the spirit what they call all the lands, the islands, the Americas? Do we have a North America? Do we have a South America? Which America are you blessing? Do we not have Brazil and, and all those countries? Uh, uh, don't we have those countries of the South? You will never hear them say, well, my God bless the world and bless the poor people. 
because their God doesn't give a damn about the poor, the indignant, the indigenous, indigenous people. We can see that in this country, the testimony of those that call themselves Indians. I don't even know how they Indians when the people of India live in India. Can you explain that to me? I'm not an educated man. How, how are they Indians? But that's what they call them. India. Indians. You understand that Mr. Christopher Columbia and the revisitists, historical facts, they don't, and the historians don't want you to know that. He was just a dumb jackass. He just stumbled upon these grounds here. And so he sold them Indians. You used to have been selling that way, and you got that way. And so they dignify with Mr. America Vespucius. Uh, listen, Yisraya, I don't want to know the secular wisdom of things. Because it's not worth a damn. I don't give a damn about things or events that have happened. I can elaborate and debate men on those things. But it doesn't mean a damn thing to me. There's only one thing that makes us free, and that's the power of Yah's Imad, His truth. So you can, you can bark your mind down and clog it down with the pieces of things you've heard. That's all you've heard it. You have no, you have no scholarship of no knowledge of the substance of that. You've heard something. You retain it. You share that with someone else to make yourself look as though they're just smart. And you got something no one else got. You silly man. Stop it. You don't have a thing. You just got a piece of information you heard someone else say. That's it. That's it. So that's smart. Let me be dumb then. Hallelujah. This is what I want to get to right here. The new one mourneth and the vine languish. All the married heart do sigh. All those that say they're happy, they're sighing. There's nothing to rejoice for. They sigh. And a sigh is always an indication of deep agony, of great hardship. That's what it is. Why? This is the verse I want to read to you. The mirth of the tabret, the breastplate, is cease. That's why we must put on the breastplate of sadiq, of righteousness. Of righteousness. So it cease. So you don't see that anymore. The mirth, the oil of gladness. He said, all the merry hearted do sigh because what do we rejoice for now? If we cannot rejoice in this hour, you think of the Sarah, you're going to rejoice? If one cannot say, oh, oh, man, now, it is a confirmation that Yah is faithful. It is a confirmation that uh, you are sure it is a confirmation of the faithfulness of Yah. That's what it's all about, Israel. And if we cannot say, oh, man, oh, man, now, if there is no mirth, this uh, effervescent flow from us now, you think it's going to be in the time of great agony? Uh, it's not going to be. We have bewitched our own minds. We have, uh, we have duped ourselves. Uh, when the merry hearted, when those that rejoice abundantly and richly, when that heart sees, what do you have? What do you have, Yisrael? You don't have a damn thing. And that's a fact. We can pretend all we want to. We can pretend all we want to. But it shall come to an end. It shall cease. And that's a fact. It shall cease. It shall all cease, Yisrael. We have this image of what is of the identity of Yah's people. It is something that has been created in the minds of corrupt men. They don't know the power of Yah. And they wonder why everything or all circumstances uh, seems to be so, uh, so, so difficult uh, to, 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 to grab hold to uh, and to get things under control. Uh, because these are weak men. They have no strength. 
And this damn superficial false image that they have uh, injected into their conscience, uh, that this gives them uh, the, the, the consciousness of Yah, and then this superficial image uh, is the power of the image of Hamashiach. Uh, it's a damn lie. It's a damn lie. We are dead of the house of Yisrael. By the Ruach, by the power of the testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach. Yeah. And that's the only way, Yisrael. Yeah. That is the only way. Yeah. You know, I, I recall, what do you say to someone that's on the continent of Africa, where I was in Kenya? You know, everybody, when I say that, it is not somewhat to be insulting or to assault the people. But I said to one Pastor Kimoni, he began to tell me this brother is of this tribe, this brother is of this tribe, I'm of this tribe. I said, my friend, how is it that you depict or you know which tribe one is of? No more than these liars I'm telling you that those that are of the dark hue skin are of the tribe of Yehuda. And those that are of uh, certain tribes of the American Indians, uh, and they never were in bondage, you understand, a uh, slavery. So I say to this, uh, I said, my friend, that's somewhat, it's somewhat insane. And I did not say this to offend him. I said, you all dirty and you all stink. How in hell you know what tribe one is of? You understand. How do you know that? Well, it's in the language, the way one speaks. It's in their tongue. Well, I have people asking me all the time, where are you from? Where are you born? Where were you born? Where are you from? Are you from America? I tell them, I'm from the Americas. That's dumb, most people. See, they don't know. I said, I'm from the Americas. I am. Where? From the Americas. That's where I'm from. And then I will say I was born in a little town that is not even on the map. It's called Hickory Grove, South Carolina. How about that? This is how stupid this generation is. Yes, a few men will be left. There's those that have the similitude of a physical man, but they don't have the power of the Ruch, the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. They do not have that authority to operate in the Ruach of Almighty Yah. Period, Yisrael. We should have the strength of his testimony. The mirth of the tablet cease. And the noise of them that rejoice ends. And the joy of their music, the heart. It has ceased, Yisrael. They shall not drink the yai and the wine of refreshing. Your sure said to us, take, eat for my flesh, for the purpose of the mandate. Of the will that Yah has placed in me, his chafetz. He said, I want you to consume it, to eat it, to dine on it. For it is the strength of one's nourishment in the life of the opposition that will oppose you, uh, that you may have strength to endure the very battles. For it is meat indeed, and my dam, my blood. It is the wine of refreshing. It is the one of life. It is what rejuvenates us. It is what caused the tablet or the breastplate uh, to be renewed in the sadiq or the righteousness of Yah. Not in some kind of religious holiday mess. I see the duping of the women. I see that with these men today, they dupe them. They dupe the women with the T.D. Jakes, the Minions, the women. They fall out like crazy things. They shake their titties, their buttocks, they're naked as hell. No different than Paris Hilton, 
no different than Lindsay Lohan and they shake and they gyrate and you got the dogs what calls themselves men's there they're waiting and of course they drop a little something over them because they dress like a two cent whore when they come to that whole house do they dress that way sure they dress that way they're naked and they're ready to run when they come in who sing that song in the days of the 60s in the 70s it was a song uh, Bobby Womack he was looking for love looking here looking there looking everywhere you simply go to the whole house you can find all you want I'm not going to I am not going to to apologize Yisrael for the nation of Yisrael has been doped has been duped and doped and that's a fact where's the beauty of it where's the beauty of Yisrael where's the Tifra where's the Tifra where's the strength who has the magnificent power that illuminates the very power of Yoshua HaMashiach? Where is that today? We are broken people. We're trying to find something in all that we search. We're not finding a damn thing. And so we have the proliferation of whole houses. Uh, wife goes to, to, to the Pentecost whole house uh, and he goes to the holiness whole house. Uh, I watched my natural relatives. Uh, she went to the Baptist whole house over here and he went there. I said, what a damn stupid shame. How stupid is that? And that's a fact. Listen, it makes no difference. She goes her way and he went his way. You tell me that's ichad? That's one? Nah. Not at all, Yisrael. I want to finish this quickly. It says the city of confusion is broken. This Bethel mindset uh, where envy and strife is, uh, there's confusion uh, and your mind thinks evil. When you find a mind that uh, purports evil concepts uh, and thoughts, uh, it's because one is full of envy and one is full of strife. And it, bring, it brings about that desolation, that destruction. And that's what this Bevel is. It is a land of confusion. And the masses of the people are confused. You got these religious houses of ill repute. They have holotry. And that's what they produce, Yisrael. Everyone got their own God. The Methodist got their God. The Baptist got their God. The Catholic got their God. Damn their gods. They all got their own Jesus. The Baptist Jesus is different than the Methodist Jesus. And the Methodist Jesus is different than the Catholic Jesus. And of course, you must understand that the Presbyterian Jesus is much different than the Lutheran Jesus. Damn Jesus. How about that? That's bold, isn't it? Damn their Jesus. Damn their lords. That man is... He is bewitched. I hear you talking. No, you're the one that's bewitched. You're the one that is deceived. If they all have the same God... And the same Jesus, the same Lord, yet there's no defined effort or no ikar among them. Those that call themselves Hebrews and those that say they are the true lineage of Yisrael, hell, they don't even honor each other. And that's the truth. I've never found such, listen, I've never found such dismal, weak men in all of my life among those that say they're Hebrews. They're not Hebrews. I'm going to show us in the teachings to come, Yisra. I say this all the time. Just like the prince of the Tsar of the powers of the earth did not identify Yahshua, he was the head of Yah's Torah, was he not? That's why the world is looking for the true lineage of Yisra'ah. They're doing everything they can to seek them out. But the seal of Yah is upon them. The seal of Yah. 
You understand Yisra'ya? And we think that we're going to find them through some kind, uh, some kind of e evolution or evolving, uh, that there are certain physical aspects and traits we're going to know then. That's a damn lie. It's not so. You got those that call themselves Hebrews in this nation. And yet when it comes to the continent of Africa, there are no Hebrews there. You damn jackass, you stupid man. He puts, he puts, he scattered his nation abroad. It's like taking seeds in your hands, the small turnip seeds, and you put, you scatter them. Can you go and find them? You may be able to pick up one. But if the soil is still right, I watch Oxymion. I know my Yawasa doc did a nice job. Excellent job. But when Simeon got on that big 160 horsepower the next day, he worked that soil. He worked it like a champion. That 16 foot wide disc it dropped. And it was like a carpet when he finished, everything smooth. You could not find one seed in there if you had sown that field. So he has put, he has scattered Yisraya. And in that, he did something that nothing could defy. He put, or he, Nothan, he put his Torah in the inward parts there, Laban. He wrote his Brits. And so when they hear the sound of the Toruach, sound of the Shofar, the one that cries in the wilderness, they will know Yisrael. They will know. They will know because in the fertile soil of Yah, it always bears fruit abundantly. Erezachin, Yarabi Yah taught us on that, that he's coming for the abundance of the peri, the fruits of Yah. The confused city is broken down. Every house is shut up. that no man comes in. There's a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. And any time you're shemcha, you're rejoicing, our joy, to know that there is none greater than Yah. For Almighty Yahweh is the great I am. He is the one. He is the Chayil. He is Chaya. And when that wine dries up, there is no mirth among Yisra'ya. And so that's why there's no liveliness among the people Yisra'ya. We're just like dry bones, Yisra'ya. It is going to take the power of this Zerah, the teaching, uh, that we must be damned to fear Yah. We must be damned to give honor unto His name and damn every God. Let every damn God be cast into hell. This man's veracity in his speech 
Come on, you listen to Hammer. And, well, Hammer's are old. He's not even in the mix of things. But who, who, who are the bad boys today? People listen to that. And they, they call your women all kinds of sluts and hoes. And, and they call them, they express biological, or the same breed as a female dog. How about that? Well, he said, damn and hell. How many of y'all answer the telephone? Hello. 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 You say hell, don't you? All right, then. Don't, don't even. You'll be surprised at people that. I had one to write me the other day, one day, this woman. She was a woman. Well, you know, you, you take so much. The truth is so beautiful. You, see, you take stuff out of it when you say, damn, this silly woman. This silly woman. Just silly. Oh, he cuss. Well, if I cuss, I cuss. Then I don't know what cussing is. He cuss. All right. I'm going to close in a moment, Yisraya. Let, let me read this. So the whole house is empty. There's a joyous darkness. Uh, in the city, in the city is left desolation. Have we not entered into the city of Yerushalayim? The city of Shalom? Then we should not be desolate once we come into Yah's city. Has he not placed his name there? The city is left desolate. Uh, and the gate is smitten uh, with destruction. When this it shall be in the midst of the land among the people. There shall be a shaking of the olive tree. He's going to shake Yisraya. He's going to shake his nation. It's going to be shaken. And the olive tree and the gleaning grapes. When the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voices and they shall sing. For the majesty of Yah. They shall kara. They shall crawl out from the sea. Isn't this one? Shall rise up out of the masses or the sea, the yam. Shall he not declare that this is my sea, it is mine, it belongs to me? Is it not the covenant with the covenant or the brick with Abraham? Yah says, from the great river of uh, Mitzrayim unto the great Euphrates, uh, that is the land for your people. Did we not bring that out on last Shabbat? Uh, this is Egypt here. And this is the great river Euphrates. Uh, and this is the land of Yisrael. Yeah, not that little piece of slither. Land right there. But all of this land. Uh, what about the great rivers of, of the waters. Uh, and, and, and the tributaries. Uh, that brings forth life. Uh, and substance unto a nation. Uh, it brings the commerce. Uh, whereby we have seen the powers that be. Uh, that grow rich. Uh, of the mercantile. Uh, of uh, of robbing the nations of, of the vast seas or the yam. And when Yah uses the word sea, uh, he uses the word yam. It signifies the great river, river Nile and the great river Euphrates. How do you know this? Well, you got to dig beyond your emotions to find this out. Uh, you got to go a little deeper than just reading. And that is what it identifies the yam. The great rivers. He says that this one, he shall, uh, he, we, he, and they shall crawl out from the masses of the people. Wherefore we shall uh, chabod or honor you, Yah, in the fire, in the great trials, even the name of Yah, of Yisra in the isles of the sea. So we must honor Yah, Yisra That's why I am very tenacious when it comes to the gods and the lords. And the minds of the people have been deceived uh, and robbed of the beauty of their Abba. That's why I will say, damn every God, damn Jesus, damn the Lord. Uh, yeah. Because these are superficial, false identities uh, that have stole from the very power of Yah. I don't give a damn what you say, Yisra'ya. You can, you, can, you can depict your black Jesus. You can depict your Hispanic Jesus. Uh, you can draw your... 
your Korean Jesus, you can draw your Russian Jesus, you can, you can, you can have your Swaziland Jesus, but this is an image that was created out of a damn corrupt mind, and the very person of Jesus is just what you've seen all the days of your life, that image of that Caucasian image, that's Jesus. I don't give a damn how you want to look at it. It's a false depiction. It's to lure the minds away from your sure Hamashiach. We must just deal with the truth of it. You can make him any damn color you want to. He's still a lie. He is still a damn lie. Well, you have to be careful, people. They're babies. Well, you know, it's one thing about little babies. Uh, one day, little Sarah, she says to me, she said, why did you get those shoes? She said, why are you buy them? Said, don't, don't even go that way, you all right. I said, uh, I got an excellent price and I like them. She said, you don't need to wear them. Give them to me. Right. What are you going to do with them? So she was saying to me, it's just inappropriate. You don't need to wear those shoes. They look pokey, Dad. Why do you wear that? See, we're from a little child. We don't even want to wear them from the childish things because we think that we are superior in all that we think and know. We don't want to say we're ignorant. We have been duped. We have been deceived. That we don't give a damn about each other. Yeah. It's amazing that Yisra say they love each other and they don't give a damn. That's a fact. Wives don't give a damn about their husband. Husband doesn't give a damn about his wife. She does her thing and he does his thing. I would not even live in a house like that, woman. Now we're going to do my thing. You're going to like my thing. Because I do you right in my thing. That's the way it's going to be. No other way. No, not for me. Maybe for you, but for me, no. It's not going to be. The one last thing I want to read here, Yisraya. A few things that I'm going to close. Hallelujah. I intended not to go this way. But because I've gone this way, I'm going to finish it. How about that? It's all relevant for our... What I use the word maturation is maturing to the level whereby we can stand in truth. And after we've done all to stand and we have refortified ourselves, then we stand to see the Yoshiach, the Yoshua, the salvation of Yah. And it dis, it, despite the opposition, we stand... We stand firm. We do not change, capitulate. We do not alter the course of Yah. We stand in the assurance of affirmation of what Yah said is truth. And our lifestyles and our lives are perfect examples of that. You know, they may call us an occult here, but these damn wicked people don't even give a damn about each other. I had a woman who called me the other day. She says, well, someone told me that I could call you and get assistance. I said, uh... Someone told me to call you. I was referred to you. Uh, and uh, something she said about the Lord Jesus. I said, well, I don't believe in no Jesus. I don't mess with him. Oh. She said she had sickle cell anemia. And she was trying to get... I've, you'd be surprised the people that call. That's on drugs. And trying to get a fix here. And think that because they called and asked for money, that we're just going to give them money. What I would tell them, you need, yeah, I need some food, my babies need. I tell you what, we have a garden here. You can come, we got collard greens, we got mustard greens, we got cabbage, we got beans, we got tomatoes. Come on down, I'll give you a bag, I'll meet you out front, and come pick all you want to. Well, uh, you know, they don't want that. I got all the beans you want, you come pick some. I'm not going to pick them for you. You want some, you pick them. And you find out that it's just this, trying to, this little hucks 
thinking that you're gullible and dumb. Of course, when I finished preaching to this young woman, uh, she would not have come for the money if I gave it to her. You understand? Because I dethroned her damn Jesus and let her know he's her damn dog, he's a pig. Sure did. And a vile Holy Ghost, which is a damn lie. If the Holy Ghost make you dress like that woman, make you dress like an effeminate thing, man, something is wrong. I don't want no damn Holy Ghost. I want to, be, I want to dress like a man. Yeah, I want to look like a man. You understand? I want her to look like a woman. My strength, my beauty. That's what a woman is. She's the strength and the beauty of her husband. She's the opening of his heart. And hell, she's out trying to impress every damn man. You don't have nothing that every man wants. You think you got something that you are silly woman. We're no men. All men are dogs. Well, how many have you had then, whore? You've had every man you ever had meet Jezebel, huh? That's how they talk. Yeah, they say. They, no man is worth it. None of them. How in the hell would you know? Have you had every man? Even a whore doesn't have every man. Don't tell me. You all haven't heard that? Especially the men of the diaspora. None of them are worth anything. The dark you. A man, Mr. Obama, what, two years ago on Father's Day, he rebuked all the men of the diaspora. Start up with me, fathers. Well, I'll tell you what, as they would say, if the walls could speak between him and Michelle, uh, it would tell you some stories, all right? How about that? I'll, I'll leave it at that, then. How about that? And tell him, come on. Now you stand up, Mr. Brock. You be a man. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. So I don't let people say that. All women, are, no, no, all women are not that way. The ones you know are that way. The ones I know, they're not that way. Mm -mm. Your woman may be that way. My woman is not that way. She honors me. I'm the king. I'm the milah. That's what I am. It's sad because most women today don't realize I looked at some data the other day listening. Most women over the age of 40, if they're not married by the time they're 40, then their chances of getting a husband is less than 2%. Even a man at 50, he can find a woman that will marry him. Even a man at 60, even a man at 60, he can always find a woman. Sure he can. But a woman at 50 is not going to find a man that's going to marry her. But a man is 60, can find, believe me, he can, all day long. You can go out and find all the women you want. You can have five. You can have your house over here. You can have your house there. You can come right here to Jefferson and have your five different women. That's a fact, daughters of Tizayon. It's just a fact. It's a fact. So if he wants him a Caucasian woman, he's got him, Hispanic here. He's got two or three black women here and another white gal over here. It's just a fact. My natural sister calls me to tell me my natural father had passed. And so she was telling me about her son. He has, I turned the telephone on speaker so my wife could hear. I don't hide anything. Oh, he got six babies. I said, how old is the boy? He's 27 years old. I said, is he that old? I wouldn't even know the the kid if I saw him I, I don't even know my sister's children because we have no physical contact I said, is that all yeah you know all his babies by white women and he's blacker than a berry he's blacker than those shoes when he was a little kid she said all, all of them and he got how many how old is the old one? the oldest one is 11 and, and she speaks as though that is something to be proud of she speaks as though that is something to be very proud of. I said, how sad. Where's the boy now? Oh, he's in jail. Hmm. So it makes no difference. And it's just a fact. So that's why I say always to mothers, you need to teach women to love their husbands. 
show them how to love them. Yah will deal with the man's heart. He commands the women to teach the young women to love their husband, to be chaste, to be keepers of their home. And you damn jackass, weak men, you don't have the wife out working. And you sitting on your ass all day and doing nothing. That's a sure sign of great weakness. Do you understand? And I don't back down. Let me close from here. Hallelujah. I say to my Zakhin, Charles David, he said, you know, Riach, you're preaching. And then one of the ox say, man, how, why would he say that? He's talking right to me. I'm talking to Israel. I know our condition. I know our shape. I know what bad of shape we're in. We're in bad shape. We're sad people. But the mirth is going to be restored. The fragrance of the great odor, the scent of Yahshua HaMashiach. You're going to get the damn nasty taste of Jesus out of your mouth and out of your nostril. You're coming out of the Pentecostal whole house. You can't fellowship in a house of darkness that elevates the name of Jesus Christ above the name that the one said, I come in my father's name. He did not come in a damn Greek or an American name. He came in the name of his Abba. And a man's name never change. Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, he has an Arabic name. You call him Barack Hussein Obama. Mr. Mumar Gaddafi, his name was Arabic. His name was not Charles Johnson. It was Mumar Gaddafi. Mr. Netanyahu. They underline what we call Yisraya. His name is an off-brand name that you don't call him Mr. Nathan. His name is Netanyahu. He came in the power of his father. He did not come in a damn God's name. Shaul said, if the power of this message be hidden from you, if you don't understand what I'm saying, it is because the God of this world has blinded your mind, at least the power of the Torah shine through, that you might be saved. I said to a young man yesterday, attend one of the largest who houses in Charlotte. I say, young man, I've searched diligently. I continue to search all the time. I said, please, father, don't give me the Webster Dictionary definitive of it. Show me the origin, the etymology of the word God. I've never been able to find it. It is a hybrid superficial uh, word. It has no damn meaning. Uh, and that's a fact. Don't tell me what Webster says. That's why I say damn every God. Damn the black God, the white God, the Jew God. Damn the black Jesus, the white Je Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You know they got rich Jesuses too, don't you? They got segregationist Jesus too. The one that was taught at first, he was one of segregation. Silly house. Uh, you all can frown and get afraid, but I'm not afraid. Let's deal with the facts of the truth. It's cowardly individuals today. There's someone that always, I don't know, she, she loves uh, Shimri's preaching, his teaching. She always putting these remarks on our YouTube Sight, and she says, that's right, cowards. This is a cowardly generation. It's afraid to stand up. Stand up for Yeshua's mighty name. Stand up for the name of Yeshua. Hamoshia, stand up. Stand up, O Israel. Stand up. For the name of Yahshua, stand up for the name of Yahshua, Yisrael, stand for the name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, denounce that Jesus, stand for ya, stand up for the name of Yahshua, hallelujah. I want to close it with this last two verses here. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah says to us, hear this. He says, from the uttermost parts of the earth have we heard songs, even the chabot to the sadiq, the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe to me. The treacherous dealers that have dealt treacherously, yes, uh, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. And in the religious spirit, they've dealt very treacherously with us. Uh, in this, uh, under this banner of Bevel, of this confused city, uh, they have dealt very treacherously. They have dealt with us in lies. They have dealt with us with shikha, with lies uh, and deceptions and falsehood. Uh, and this damn wicked council, it, it doesn't give a damn about uh, the pigmentation of one's skin. Why? Because uh, the enemy must find the very zira of Yisrael. I said to people, you know, it's amazing that when I was there, uh, when I was there in, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, there was a man that he walked in to me. He looked like what you would call a Caucasian. He looked just like that skin complexion, just like Zakane Dawid. And do you know what his ethnicity was? He was a black man. So how are you going to, I would, most folks will see him and say, he's not a Hebrew. So damn stupid. His skin, his hair, I'm not lying to you. The way he talked was a little different. I'm like, okay. Come on, Yisrael. We identify them by the measure of this Brit, this Brit's covenant, this Brit Hadassah, this renewed power of the testimony of Yah and Yahshua in their bosom, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And anyway, Yah told you to love Isa. Not to hate on him. For he is your brother. For he is your brother. For he is your brother. It's amazing. These folks, they, they won't contact me. Believe me, Yisrael. They know of this preacher. Well, one of the largest websites. We average on the website, average every day. Between 500, uh, probably 500 plus visits. Every single day. I mean, there are those that are basketball players don't get that many. We average that 525. What is it averaging now, Oxymion? It averages about 500 people every day that go to this website. You understand? That come to our website. That go to sisters, or what is that, sisterhood? You'd be surprised. That's not including that. That's just this one, Yahweh's sword. And that's a fact. And there are those that know of me, know about me, but they will not even. They don't want my fellowship because I would dismantle their lies. I rebuked a man yesterday. I rebuked him hard. I said, man, get up and stand up. Stand with strength. You got a man here that will show you tremendous love. And his words mean something. When I vow a vow, I mean it. When I say something, I mean it. So cowardly, weak men today, they think they're hurt because they talk much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fear the pit and the snares are upon you, O inhabitants of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he that flee from the noise of the fish shall fall into the pit, and he that come up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snares. And for the windows from the high are open, and the founders of the earth do shake. You're not going to get by. Out of this government, this power that Yah has raised up, He's going to cause all heavens and all hell to be open. And every kind of unclean spirit shall come upon the earth. That's why I tell each of you, you that listen, you that have joined us, you better examine your own bosom. You better examine your own damn wicked heart, Yisrael. You can walk in your religious auspice all you want to, and your damn falsehood of pretense. But it's all coming, payday is coming after a while. You can pretend all you want to. Uh, you can tell me you love me. Your actions will speak louder than your words. Uh. You can continue your own hard hardness uh, and, and your own falsehood uh, and your own, uh, own your, and your own, it's to your own demise. Uh. You're going down to the pit of hell. Uh. You don't have to hear it. Uh. You can shut your damn ears. Uh. You're sure said that you will do it. Uh. Generation when they don't want to hear, they fall asleep. 
I just want to do I will. The hell they want, when they listen to the soap operas, you think them women fall asleep during the day? Talk to me. You think they fall asleep on their job? We get fired. And here's something more important than a job. And we all get drowsy. We get sleepy. This is a damn cold generation because iniquity, because there is no love for Torah. That's what iniquity is, ovon, ovina. Because iniquity shall abound the love of many wax cold. They don't know how to love. They don't know how to love. Women don't know how to love their husband. It's sad. Men don't know how to love their wives. They think it's a sexual thing. It's, it's, it's greater than that. That is the culmination of all the greatness of all the other elements. This is a stupid generation. 594, we're averaging 594. That's how many people come. They come from South America, from Russia, from China, from India. If I could answer all the people to write me from India and Africa, I, just, I know they need help. They're poor. I just can't. If I respond to them, I know what's going to happen. I may just say, Yabrurak, keep up the excellent work, because I know what's going to happen. They come from Brazil. They come from every nation. And that's a fact. The earth is broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. And the earth moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. And shall be removed from the cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. That's why we are feeling such heaviness because of our sins, because we've transgressed the Torah, our wickedness, our defiled nature. We shall arise every morning with the light of your shoe. Get up. Yeah. Get up out of bed. Yeah. Rise up. Yeah. It's your damn transgressions that are heavy upon you. And everything around you is heavy because of your own wickedness. And you want to blame someone that says your own sins, woman. Man is your own wicked ways. Yeah. They shall not rise up again. And it shall come to pass that Yah shall punish the host of the high, one that are on high. I will get into all that next week. I want to show you something. I did not intend to go this far today in this, all right. But let me finish this, all right, upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And they shall be shut up in prison in hell. And after many days they shall be judged. The, the, sh the, the shofat, the judge shall come. And the moon shall be confound. And the sun ashamed when Yah are host. Show rain in Mount Zion and in Yerushalayim and before his ancient or his Olam Viat or his ancient honor. He's going to rain. He's going to rain in Yerushalayim. We are the people of Yah Yisrael. We will know each other by the very peri, the fruit, the nature of one's bosom. We will love Yisrael. We will love the house of Yisrael. There will be a great uh, compassion for, for his truth. We will not so eagerly and willingly. Uh, and when Yah uses the word willingly, he's talking about hafetz. Uh, that there's a pleasure to sin. Uh, there's a pleasure to do Yisra'ya wrong. Something is wrong in your bosom, Yisra'ya. Where there's a pleasure to reproach the house of Yisra'ya. And yet you intrigue the wicked. And those that despise Yah. And you have platitude for them, and you don't give a damn about his house that your shoe has died for. In hell, you shall lift your eyes, you shall be damned. Don't give a damn who you are. And that is the plain truth. Just titled this one The Plain Truth Today. The Plain Truth. We greet you all that have joined us. And your shoe is mighty name. Uh, may the riches of Yah rest upon Kul Yisraya. The nation, the elect, the bohir, the chosen elect, scattered throughout every nation, under every kind of government, who pigmentation of skin range from one extreme to the other. And only Yah identifies. Hell, you can't even identify those that are your friends. Can I say this before I close? I remember probably I was 20... So it was over 30 some years ago. I was 25 years ago. I was 25 years. It was over 30 some years ago. What, 20, 35 years nearly? No, 25. Oh, yeah. yeah it was 30, about 30, 33, 34 years ago. It was a long time, about 25 years old. But I'll never forget 
I went to visit an aunt. She was dying. She had gone to the hospital. They had operated on her. They had cut her open. And when they cut her open, they said, sew her up. Send her home. She, from what they said to me, she was charred inside. She was dying. And I will never forget. She says to me as I went to visit her, it was, we call her Aunt Flory. I've never known her name, but that's what we call her. Mama, you know, you know, you know them all. All right. But her name, we call her Aunt Flory. And I will never forget she was standing there. You, she was sick, but she was not emaciated over, but she could not walk. And I never forget, she says, David, I've, I've been wanting to tell you this for a long time. She said, there was a very beautiful, tall, dark-skinned, regal man, very charming man. He was strong-looking, uh, symmetry, tall. He was about 6'3". She said, this is your brother. Huh? My brother. She said, you have another one. R.J. Nichols is his daddy. And this is your brother. And he was one of the most gentlest of men. I've never seen him again, maybe one day. If I'd have passed that man every day, I would have not known he was my brother. He had, there was a sweetness about this man that when I talked to him, it was just, he was a sweet man. He was about my age, maybe he was about my age because what I'm told, I am the oldest of his children. I'm the oldest one. Am I the oldest one, mama? Okay, I'm the oldest of his children. But he seemed to be such a sweet young man. And she said, his mother, she's a very dark-skinned woman. And this is your brother and you have another one. I would never know the brother if I saw him. Unless we discuss pedigree. So it is with Yisra'ya. You're not going to know Yisra'ya. Because as Yah hit his Hamashiach. Because if the powers had known who they, he was, they would have never said, take your hands off of him. And so Yah, when he reveals the house of Yisra'ya, there shall be an onslaught from hell uh, to destroy, to annihilate. Uh, and then he shall rise with the hirp, uh, the sword of his mouth. Uh, Yoshua HaMashiach uh, shall stand for Yisra'ya. That shall be the insignia uh, of Yisra'ya. And we shall rise up in the beauty of our Abba, for he shall fight for his house. You stand on the damn street corners of Atlanta and looking like fools uh, and dressed in your, you believe. One says, write to me, where's your belt? I started to write the fool back, but I didn't. I want to say, I know you're fat. Where's your community where you can live with the people that you call Yisra'ya? Silly man. They'll respond to me like that, but they won't write me back. The smart boys that are doing nothing. Where's your belt? Where's your belt? What, what fat as you are, you need a girdle, man. I'm not trying to be funny. And these cats, big, big guts, m most of them are like that, man. Just huge, big pigs. That's what they look like. Where's your belt? Here it is. I got no one. How about that? I like to take them down. I do. Yah's riches upon you all, Yisra'ya. Greetings to you all, our friends. Wherever you're listening, I know I went off the path today, but we'll continue on that on next Shabbat. Uh, we want you to know, you that have joined us, there have been those that have written to us asking about uh, the Mo'ad, uh, the Haq, the Chagha, the great time of celebration of uh, the Mo'ad to Ru'ah, or the Feast of Trumpets. We we'll began next. What day is that? It's the 18th, the 17th. It's Tuesday evening. Tuesday evening to Wednesday evening. Okay. We will be discussing that. I know I had intended to talk on that on the live broadcast, but I needed some rest. And so I rested. We planted quite a bit of plants. We put out probably three, 3,500 plants one day more than that. It was raining. Zachim Bidamin said, let's do it. I'm like, man, I don't like to get wet and work. I don't, not that I don't. He says, already here. And of course, when it came down, it just, boom. He said, we already wet? Let's roll, baby. And of course, it wasn't but a matter of minutes. You, you got mud creeping in you. And I'm like, man, 
don't do me like this. And it was raining. It was flowing. And then you had the gnats wanting to play in your eyes and your, as Granny would say, your ears and all of that. So, and it's pouring down rain. He said, we're wet now. Let's roll. So you're safe. You know how he is. He went, well, I, I said, well, think about Zakhin Yaramiya and Yawasa Zakhin Yusipi Yar. They work in the rain. I said, think about those Mexicans picking beans for you. They are out there in the rain field. They get paid by the quota. They don't get paid by the hour. They get paid by the piece work, all right? So they can work in it. Get a meet and say, let's work. Let's work. I'm working in rain like that when you're wet, and then it rained again. It does something to your body. It really does. It does something to your muscularity, your strength. It, and especially when you go to bed at night. And I would just walk out. The rain just really, it was not the labor, but you've been in your back like that. You, you, you'll feel that. And then we were up yesterday morning early, and then I had to go to Charlotte to pick up those things that we had purchased. And so I was just wore out. I intended to be back here by noon. It was two when I got back. I hadn't eaten anything that morning. I was hungry. So when I got back, I ate. I was intended to play my, I have no basketball. I say, little man, let me look. I'm looking at some scriptures. So if I'm not there this time, you want to get your little friend? I knew that that would kind of save me from that. That kind of satisfied him. He said, he came to the office. I'm, you ready? No, I'm not ready. Is you ready, Papa? He had on his headband. Sweat popping out of his forehead. He was ready to take me on. He said, you ready? I said, little man, you want to get your friend? Yes, sir. Okay, get him. I like that part. I, I won't have to play you basketball. I, I said, I'll get you next week. Oh, when I get him next week, I'm going to eat him up. I go through my regiment this week. I didn't get a chance to. No, he couldn't handle me in my regiment. I got him. So, Ya Barakyu, all Yisrael made this Shabbat be great. We will... We'll be sending out newsletters concerning uh, Turu'ach, Feast of Trumpet. We're going to have singing and our little ones singing. We're going to have dancing. We dress in our regala and beautiful colors. Come on. That's the way it should be. I want it to be something that is prominent in their minds. I remember the Christmas when I was a young kid, five. I got a pump water gun. We didn't get anything in those days. Skates and cap pistols. And those were money. They were riding bicycles. I'm like, come on. I got a pump water gun. We lived in a shack. I put water in that gun. I lied to you not. Didn't shoot it out that day. That next morning, I had put it in the closet. Yas, my witness, I recall this. It was froze in that. The water was froze. And what I did, we had a little small fireplace in that shack. I remember putting that gun over that and that, 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 that plastic buckle. I'm like, this figure in my gun. That's it. We got bags of oranges and apples uh, and hard candy. That was it. My first bicycle I got, I hated it. They were getting those three speeds and the five speed was coming out. The little, the little bikes like what they ride, Abner and this boy ride to Cleveland. <clears throat> And of course, she buys me one of those big tank Pee Wee Herman bikes. I mean, the big old 28 inch rim. I'm like, I, I cried. I didn't ride. I didn't even ride it. I didn't even ride it. I was ashamed. But I tell you what, when I got that Cadillac on the road, I realized that she will walk all those little wheels down. I realized she could roll faster. Then all of their bikes. So they put it in third gear and they pumping. And I got that big Cadillac, that tanker on the road, them big tires turning, whereby they making five or six pedals. Just one for me. She just walking them down. And once I realized she will walk everything down, give me my big Pee Wee Herman bike. She will walk everything down. Everything. We raised from one block to the other. I'm standing up coasting while they just, in third gear, just said, I'm gone. That's right. She may have been slow starting out. But when she got that engine humming, she would walk anything down. So if those events 
Easter, we got a new suit and everybody wore a hat in those days. I don't care if you were 10 or 3, you wore a hat. And so if we did all that, the ham sandwiches and the damn pork chop, that filthy mess, then we're going to have a, an occasion so that our little ones will remember and say, Oh, I remember that. So beautiful. The show father was singing and mom and I, we were singing, we were dancing and we shouted in the Ruach of Yah. So you and your homes just join us and just do what we do. Dress up. Dress up like you're going somewhere where we are. We're yeah. going up yonder. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. We're going to meet our boy. Yeah. Two or three gathered up in that house. He shall be in the midst. Yeah. So we're going to have a great time. Oh, way down on the earth. We are going to gather for the feast of Yarapa. Yes, we shall. Oh, we're going to sing, shout, and dance in the Ruach of Yah. We're going to have a great time. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a great time. Yes, we are. We're looking forward to the Ruach, the feast of Yah. Oh, we are with us. Shiva of Yah, shout, shout, woo, woo! Uh, we're gonna dance, sing, and shout. We're gonna have a great time in that time. We're looking forward to the more at the feast of Yah. Hallelujah! Let us stand to our feet. <laughs> Hallelujah! Come on, Yisrael, Yabra. We're going to turn toward Yerushalayim. Yah says to his nation, as long as we're in the, the Shabuth or the Shabi in captivity, that if we would turn toward Yerushalayim and pray, he would hear us. So these are your words, Yah, and we hold you to that in all things. We do barak you in your Shua's mighty name. We give great honor unto your name for your name is excellent it is the only name the mighty name given unto Yisrael that we may know your Yashach your Yeshua the salvation the deliverance the promises of Tikva hope for your nation your people that have been purchased redeemed by the dam of Yeshua HaMashiach we have gathered on this Yom Shabbat that you command us to Zuchah HaShabbat and Shabbat Chodash keep it set apart and we have come to honor you Yah receive our simple gifts of worship Shacham receive our prayers receive our offerings of Torah we don't have that's all we have to offer we have no money Yah we offer unto you our hands are living and our nephesh, that's it, Yah. Bless your people. Bless them scattered throughout every nation of the earth. Watch over them in Yahshua's name. Guide them. Guide your messengers. Raise up the mighty men, Yah, that you have declared and proclaimed their names in the annals of time, that they may stand mightily before the house, the congregation of Yisraya, and to declare your mandate for your people that we might be delivered. We ask it in your shoes name. We need you above all things this day. Help us and guide us. Forgive us of our sins. For we bring no burden or weight of sin before you this Shabbat. Give us all Shabbat this day. Rest in your shoes mighty name. We told her I'm Baraki for all things in the most excellent name of Yeshua. Hamashir. And with uh, our call, our voice, we cry hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yabrak Yisrael.